Uh, this is video one from my sports nutrition class. So we're going to be doing dietary fats. I went into Canvas. I downloaded the lecture slide to my computer, my tablet, whatever. And then I uploaded it into Google Docs. And that's what you're looking at is Google Docs. And remember the notes for every slide are beneath. Those are great to use when you are doing your quizzes. So dietary fats are kind of a funny thing to teach in a sports class because in reality, I, I know there's a lot of internet themed baloney about types of fats that are going to improve your athletic performance. But in reality, um, it's all hype. You know, there are some types of fats that are small in nature. They're called medium chain triglycerides. They may provide some athletic advantage to elite athletes, but for the vast majority of athletes and just people on earth, just choosing healthier fats versus what we consider less healthier fats and timing them at the right time, not before, not during, and not immediately after exercise. And you're going to do great in life and you're going to, and you're going to go on and live as long as you genetically possibly can, assuming you're not chain smoking and, and doing other bad behaviors. Um, fats are a great source of fuel. They do require a lot of oxygen though. So humans prefer to burn fats at rest or at moderate activity as you and I love using this word titrate, but it's it's a, you know it's a great science word. As you start to titrate up your athletic intensity, your ability to use fat becomes less and less because your ability to ship oxygen to tissues that burn fat, muscle, becomes less and less. Okay, um, but you know it's not only used for it's not only used for um, energy. It's also used to make or, uh, hormones. There are estrogen testosterone is made from cholesterol that that's a type of fat um, you have to eat fat as a as a vehicle in which other things which are fatty vitamin a vitamin d vitamin k vitamin e those are all fat soluble vitamins they get shipped along with your dietary fat and there are some kinds of fat and i think you've heard of omega-3s and maybe you haven't heard of omega-6s but those are structured in a way that makes them essential you have to eat them and by eating them, we're able to build other things. We can make many types of fats. We just can't make omega-3 and omega-6, which we will, we will cover in, in a, you know, another video. So fat is essential. You can eat a very low-fat diet. You cannot eat a non-fat diet. You will just disassemble your body. Um, there's different kinds of fats in nature. Um, fats are really... Uh, you know, if, if it was a ju if it was a piece of jewelry, I know this is a weird example. Fats are kind of like a brooch that you would put on a shirt with three dangling pearl necklaces. Think of a pearl necklace. Each pearl is carbon. And then let's say the pearls had little baby pearls on the outside. That would be the element hydrogen. One of those long pearl necklaces would be called a fatty acid. I just added this to the slide set. I love it. I found it on... I found it on Google. So this would be a, a pearl necklace. These are carbon. And then the blue dots are hydrogen. And then if you have three of these together and they're kind of capped, that's a common fat that we eat. We call that triglyceride. And here's a more simplified non-chemistry term. The overwhelming type of fat you consume is triglyceride. These molecules of three little baby pearl necklaces of carbon. And it's the type of necklace that you have in the fat that kind of dictates either it's solid or it's a, or it's liquidy, like olive oil versus butter, and whether and, and, and whether that fat that you're consuming has a health property. And, and that's really what it comes down to. It's it's the individual fatty chains or carbon chains that dictate the overall the over the overall healthiness, if you will, of that triglyceride. So that's the vast majority of what you eat. 95% of everything you eat is a, is a three-chained, three-pearl necklace chain of carbons, triglycerides. Now, there are some types of fats that are not three chains. They're actually two chains. And this, is, this little image here is showing it. It's got, here's a chain of carbons. Here's a chain of carbons. The cap or the top of the brooch, right? The jewelry example is glycerol. It's a very common molecule in nature. And then it's got this other group attached to it. And you don't need to know the chemistry, but it's called a phosphate group. Phosphate groups are curious because they actually like water. You know, fat floats. Fat likes fat. Um, but phosphate doesn't. So this is called a phospholipid. And we use these a lot in nature where something that's fatty 
like a cell membrane, right, of a muscle cell, of a, of a human cell, intera interacts with something which is watery, like blood. So cell membranes are actually not made of triglycerides. Here's triglycerides. Just, it just, it's fat and it likes fat. They're made of phospholipids. The fatty parts stick into the cell and the watery head sticks out. By the way, folks, soap looks like a phospholipid. When you put dish detergent on your pans, the fatty part of the molecule touches the grease and kind of grabs it. And then when we put the pan and the soap under water, the phospholipid grabs onto the water and gets pulled off, if you will. So you don't really, you're kind of like lifting the fat off your pans. Or if you bring clothing to a, um, to, uh, I can't think of the word, to a dry cleaner, if you have a stain on a, on a blouse, on a suit, they, they don't, don't they always use a term to lift a stain? And that's kind of what they're doing. They're using organic solvents to lift the dirt off your clothes. So 95% triglycerides, a little bit of phospholipids, and the last one's cholesterol. Cholesterol is a very complex looking molecule. I couldn't, I couldn't draw it. If, if, if you said, I'll give you a million dollars if you can draw the structure of cholesterol. I've probably seen it a thousand times, 10,000 times. I can't draw it. Uh, it is essential though. You don't need to eat cholesterol. If you're a vegan or vegetarian and you don't eat any animal tissue, then you don't eat any cholesterol, which is fine because it's so essential, we make it. Uh, and cholesterol is a building block for testosterone, estrogen, and like a zillion other things in the body. Dietary, uh, bile which is used to break down fat, is made from cholesterol. It, it really is very essential. If you eat it, you'll use it. So like an egg cholesterol, you'll, you'll, you'd use that in the body. But if you don't eat eggs or you don't eat animal tissue, that's the only place you're going to find cholesterol. It's fine. You'll just, you'll just make it. And again, I love the slide. So this is really what you know, it's all about. Individual fatty chains. Right, so you can have a triglyceride that has three of these, just a long chain of carbon. You can have a triglyceride that has some of these that have these little weird things called a double bond. Even though this looks straight, I'm gonna talk about it in the next video, it's actually crooked. That double bond puts a kink into the molecule. And in fact, here's a picture of it right here. That's what olive oil looks like. The triglyceride has these like three broken fingers coming off. Um, anyway, it's kind of cool. So we'll, we'll start that in video number two.